Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Deep Rock Galactic where today's theme is Neon Lights. It turns out if your armor is the size of a small house and your weapon is honestly approximately the same size, uh, you could get, there's a lot of room to sort of glue neon light tubes onto that stuff. And you wouldn't want the bugs to be unable to see you down there. That wouldn't be very sporting. Uh, so this monstrosity here is the Hurricane Guided Rocket System. It is pretty much what it sounds like. Uh, it shoots it shoots rockets that will follow the crosshair, so you have a little bit of guidance on them. Um, it's a real double-edged sword, in my opinion. It's cool to be able to follow a fast-moving bug that dodged your shot, or to be able to, uh, you know, like guide a rocket around uh, an obstacle or something. But there are definitely a lot of opportunities, a lot of times when it would be nice to be able to just fire and then turn around and get back to work, say, you know, running from bugs or whatever. And it, it does kind of suck that you have to actually watch until the projectile hits the thing uh, with this weapon. So to mitigate that, I've gone with this jet fuel homebrew overclock, very focused on getting the missile to the place that it's going as quickly as possible. Uh, you can turn the, the the rockets, you can turn the missiles into like dumb fire rockets. I think that's overkill. I still want to steer a little bit, but this is a this is a happy medium for me. Uh, it also dramatically increases the amount of direct damage that a missile collision deals while decreasing the amount of explosion that occurs. So it makes it much more of a much more of a single fire weapon, a lot worse against crowds. Uh, but that's okay. We have the rest of our loadout for that. Uh, this cluster grenade, which is just a grenade that's made of other grenades. Uh, and then we have here the Arms Core Coil Gun, which is like, what if you wanted a rail gun, but in sort of a pistol form factor? Uh, that might not sound like a great weapon to use against crowds of enemies, but our coil gun is equipped with a field generator. It basically just like leaves a wide trail behind the projectile uh, that is full of fire damage. It ignites enemies. Uh, they're they're afraid of it. There's a fear effect. It stuns enemies that are that are close to the trail when it fires. It's a decent way of dealing with and dispersing a crowd so that we have time to shoot them with missiles or whatever. And then of course, remember you have your your mobile shield generator. Very important. Uh, so I went and I did the liquid morkite mission off camera because I figured we didn't need to see two of those in a row. Ooh, Slayer Stout. I sure do love the pickaxe power attack. Uh, so we have up next this Morkite mission, Stony Doom, which I guess is like a pretty okay kind of doom for a dwarf. Uh, we got a couple of modifiers. This mission is taking place in an area with an active lithophage outbreak. Uh, the rock pox is, is heavy and we're going to have to do a little bit of cleanup work in the area. Uh, as well as Rich Atmosphere. The yellow modifiers, which we haven't seen a lot of <laughs> so far in the series, are positive things. Uh, in this case, Rich Atmosphere um, considerably increases the move speed of your dwarves while also modifying their voices in a way that I, it's not like ne technically a mechanical benefit. I guess it it's good for morale if it delights you, it keeps, it keeps your spirits up. Uh, this one, this one might be one that we have to try and fail at and try again on a lower difficulty. The lithophage outbreak plus the hazard five, it, it can be a lot. I'd be more confident if we were playing my, uh, my usual gunner loadout. I'm not quite as practiced with this set of weapons, but we'll see as soon as they, as soon as Hoxus can be bothered to load the mission in for us. It does look like from the indicators, this is a pretty large cave system, so maybe it just had to do a lot of generation. Here we go. All right, what are we looking at around here? Be on your guard. Scanners indicate particularly rich veins of morkite and gold further down. Bring it back, boys. All right, a little bit of morkite, a little bit of gold, just as we were told. 325 is actually a lot of more kite. This is for sure going to be a long mission. Ooh. Great big nitro deposit as well. Yeah. 
So like this, this is true when you're playing multiplayer too, but it's uh, true to a greater extent I find when you're solo. Uh, the success rate of a mission generally is really tied to how quickly you're able to get that first drop. As long as you don't have the ability to get a supply drop out, you are in considerably increased danger. So let's let's do our best to locate all of the nitro quickly. Try not to stop too much for things that are not critically important until we have a supply drop available. There we go. I think it was I was digging a little bit off axis there. Oh, hey. So, like I said, pretty considerable direct damage. Uh, you'll notice the missile launcher is also dealing, uh, dealing fire damage, overheating enemies. Wow, this is a big chamber. Okay. Uh, need to be able to get down to the ground somewhere here. Uh, it looks like that's not too far down. Deployed up. Awful lot of... Um, awful lot of, what do you call it? The swarmer spawning points in the walls. That's no good. Right, it really is important to get the breeder down before focusing on anything else. Because, yeah, the, uh, the swarm of projectiles that they produce is really terrifying. All right, let's find myself a little bit of space. All right, grenade for grenades. I'm going to put out one of these flame trails in kind of the general direction of our various threats. I'm backing up into the uh, into the cavern we came from. Congratulations on surviving. It will be much, much easier for us to control the amount of septic spreader projectiles we're taking here. Although also, obviously, when they die, they're going to trap us in place for a second. And there is some red sugar right at the, uh, right at the opening of the... Well, can I reach that? Okay, that's weird. There are septic spreader projectiles just kind of hanging in the air. Okay, uh, like I said, finding the rest of the nitra. Let's figure this out before we worry about anything else. Got a little side tunnel here that leads to the ground. Fantastic news. Is that enough? That is exactly enough. Where the hell is Molly? Come on. So as you can see, the uh, the railgun has a pretty... Really? Alright. Uh, the railgun has a pretty considerable refire delay. You're only getting like one shot out of it every, every like three seconds. You know what? Fuck it. We're doing it here. I just don't, I don't want to be in that big room. Now, I've reduced the amount of explosion damage. I haven't completely removed the explosions. We are still getting some considerable uh, benefit out of shooting into groups of enemies. We do need to be wary of stuff coming up behind us here. Out of the you know way. what? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Throw up a shield. Re-ammo. So, well, you know what? We'll take one hit right now. I saw a septic spreader out there, so we're going to make sure we get that. 
light up the Mectera, and then the shield runs out, and we run back up the tunnel. I remember we've got that we got that Slayer Stout that improved uh, cooldown on our power attack, and I intend to make a very aggressive use of it. A lot of enemies that never even took a projectile just sort of burning up in the wake of the uh burning up in the wake of the railgun. Right, that guy's definitely done for. Fester fleet down. Uh, a double tap with the rocket will ignite a fester fleet or a loot bug, and the damage from the rockets plus the fire will um, will be lethal. It'll take a second, but we don't have to worry about, like, tracking them around or anything. Okay, so now we have a sort of a base from which to approach this room. There are a number of a number of problems we need to deal with relatively quickly here. Where's the other one? There it is. Oh! Cave leeches, too. Yeah, that can be a real danger in a room this size. There's just, there's no way to see a cave leech. I mean, playing solo. If you are playing on a team and you have a scout, um, scout ceiling illumination will take care of that problem very easily. Okay, so I think those were the most immediately pressing problems. So getting rid of the two, uh, the two spitters. All right, now I know we saw a Morkite vein on the wall over here. Hi. Just carve ourselves a little alcove to climb up to it from. We're going to have to use Bosco's illumination to search the room a little bit because it's this room is way too big to just um, to just see things in. Whoopsie doopsie. Mine. Take a second here and let Bosco get us an Inor Pearl. There we go. Lead down. Thank you. Okay, let's. Zip line done. What is that? That is just plant life. I mean, it's still good. Yeah, so oh, much man. swarmer garbage. All right, give me some light. Uh, when Boss goes in illumination mode, he actually does light up a pretty, pretty considerable okay. area. Light that up? I thought, I thought I saw when we came in another Morkite vein to the left. Was it that little one that I just grabbed? Uh, geez, I think it was. I think there may not be very much, um, a value in this room at all, in fact. Some light. Okay, that's more cut up there, I think. You can see the very vague sparkles in the environment. Alright, got some nitro there. There's a lot of bugs. So, like I said before, uh, Naraka Trawler's really not that difficult to deal with if you have some explosive damage. 
but you can just deal a little explosive damage to them through the sand before uh, before they have the chance to grab you. You can. Uh, hmm. Let's go. Was I seeing the light reflecting off of this like seam in the roof a little bit? Maybe. I thought I saw a morkite vein up here, but it's looking less and less like that is the case. Oh no, there it is. There it is. Help me mine this. Yeah, go get that. I will figure out the nitro that we saw on the wall over here. There it is. Oh, I hear bugs. All right. The fire trail should deal with all the swarmers very efficiently. So many swarmers, all the time, forever. All right, I wouldn't be surprised to hear the, uh, the swarm warning sometime soon here. Been running around for a minute. Wow. Wait, dude, you really just kind of scattered these all over the place, huh? It's a decent chunk of Morkite, though. Alright. Let's do it. Uh, so you can shoot through terrain with this thing, as you can see there. Yeah, they never they never come solo. Obviously, any bug that takes the actual projectile to its weak point is going to die pretty quickly. Any normal bug anyway. Praetorians have the have the stuff to survive a couple of hits. Also, the trail will ignite flammable gases, like those the Praetorians leave behind. Cluster grenade. Almost through the wave, team. Go, go. Don't want I should probably not stand in the gas while doing that. You're my new best friend. I love when a bug that is under a status ailment, um, roars at you and the roar is just long enough for it to die from the damage over time. Alright, good work, Bosco. Yeah, not bad all around. I'm glad we have someone to carry our rocks and stones. We are so, so far away from our Morkite goal. Holy hell. <laughs> and we haven't even seen any of the contagion spikes yet. Uh, that said, I think we're done with this room. It really doesn't seem like there's much else of value. There's like a tiny, tiny little bit of Morkite still up there. I don't know if we've been up on this ledge. Does it connect directly to there? We should at least take a look. We'll have plenty of zip lines. We are only 18 nitra toward the next drop. That's very worrying. All right, well. So long, suckers. We just um, completely refilled. The We saw some packed dirt over on this side of the chamber, right? Oh, no, wait. Maybe I was just seeing that. The, the swarmers? Shoot. There's got to be some peck dirt around here somewhere. Here we go. Let's hope that the next hallway and chamber cough up a fair amount of nitra fairly quickly, because we might be in some trouble otherwise. 
Oh, that's a great start. <laughs> you can't always count on it. Sometimes, sometimes the uh, the planet makes you run. Hoxus is a cruel mistress, and not like the fun kind. I guess I could have um, I could have taken the other hit off of that drop up there. I probably should have. Because we are full on rocket ammo, but we are not full, not even close, on um, on railgun ammo, and I just didn't check. Make sure we're looking in the roofs of the chambers and stuff for mineral veins. Sometimes they can be a little sneaky. Here, bugs. Oh, Jesus. I did not mean to do that. That's embarrassing. I just slipped right off that wall. Okay, well. I got the deposit. If nothing else, the chamber has this. Ready again. 36. That's. Yeah, that is definitely sufficient. Okay, good, good, good. Bosco, can we get a little scouting information? Alright, obviously we don't need to drop this anytime soon, but it's important to have it available. Think you could kill me? Oh, wait, 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 wait. See that blue glisten. I call for the mew. God, it is gonna take so many veins to get us where we're going. It's like she's bigger on the inside. Yeah, you know, I was gonna I was considering backing up onto the the ledge we came from there. Just to get a sense of whether there were more minerals up there that we'd missed, but we only get four zip lines per refill, per full ammo refill. I do not want to be wasteful right now. It's not a very large room. So, we may find that the tunnels double back. Um, you know, we didn't actually reach this room through the end of a tunnel, right? We reached the room because I fell out of the tunnel when it got too close to the chamber. So, we might find that this is this the other end of that tunnel, potentially. Or it might be properly the right thing. It might just go... Uh, gosh, who knows where. All right, well. That suggests that we're in the right place. Uh, fight in here, I suppose. Want to make sure everything's actually reloaded. So, the chamber ahead of us is going to have a rock pox contagion spike. Problematic, for sure. We'll deal with it, but it's going to take some doing and it's going to take some ammunition. Trying to be a little bit cautious with the railgun because we don't have as much ammo for it as I would like. Oh crap! Okay. 
one of those scorpions in that uh, in that group of enemies. When fighting in a situation like this, I think it's very wise to be aggressive with your shields. Okay, there's a septic spreader down there. Get a little bit of health bar scouting information from my uh, from my coil gun shots. Okay. Things are cleaned up. Our health is bad. So as long as the contagion spike exists, it's going to keep producing these annoying little plague worm enemies. It's also going to continue to produce rock pox infected glyphids, which are, jeez, look at the size of that, um, which are, you know, very annoying in their own right. That said, this weapon is fantastic for dealing with them. Oh. Let's let us not allow wasps into our lives. Give me some Actually, light. before we before we abandon this, the high side of this room, because we're probably not coming back here once we leave. All right, this is making oh, sure there weren't any any uh, more kite veins up there that we needed to deal with. really managed to survive that grenade yeah just barely but yeah all right i want to try to get down to the wall or uh, the wall the actual floor of the room uh before dropping the supply pod because i really i think once we abandon this higher ground we're probably not coming back honestly this will do Oh, that's a pair of wardens. Oh, I accidentally backed myself up against a post. No good, no good. Damn it, little bugs, stop like running around and jumping in front of the weak points. Who's gonna protect you now, we crawling? Come and get some. Some really, really impressive shooting on my part here. It's just absolutely awful. Ooh. Getting more ammo. Okay. So let's try to clean up the uh, the loose rock box bugs. Ready again. Very easy to kill if you are wielding a weapon that can reliably hit the blisters. Uh, and then also you actually shoot at the blisters. Although because the blisters have randomized positions on each enemy, uh, you can sometimes have trouble based on just like where exactly the enemies are vulnerable. Okay, that's a little more damage than I would have liked to have taken. But I mean, I think I was going to grab another hit off of this immediately anyway, so whatever. Okay. So, let's talk about these. Bad news team. A swarm of McTerras have caught your scent. Actually, you maybe never mind. We're going to request a, request a cleansing pod, but we're not actually going to do any cleansing right. for a second here. I'll just deal with these McTerras first. Right. Direct exposure as much as possible. 
Now the good news is we are essentially wielding an anti-aircraft system here. So my terrors are a pretty a pretty simple task, although it certainly helps to not shoot at them until after they're done doing their little dance. They have to sit still to fire at you. So you just wait for them to do that. They even helpfully inflate their weak points when they're about to attack. Don't love that. Try jaws are always a high priority. Ow. There is an awful lot of red sugar around, so I'm not too concerned about these little little bits of incidental damage that we're taking. Ah. Did not realize I was going to be stuck on that terrain. Okay. All right. We have more or less survived. But of course, there's only a, so, much, so much of that we're going to be able to take before we run out of supplies. So let's get this done. All right. Dealing with a contagion spike is a lot like dealing with a corruptor. You just got to get the blisters with the foam, then have somebody vacuum up the foam. Uh, the good news about Bosco is that he has a built-in vacuuming system. The unfortunate news about Bosco is that he does not focus very well. Uh, he, will, he will prefer to fight enemies over vacuuming if anything is threatening you at all. Sometimes that's really helpful. Other times it's annoying. Uh, but if you give him an explicit order, if you click your, um, your terrain scanner on the thing you want him to vacuum, he will ignore everything else to finish vacuuming until it's done. Ooh, this is really annoying. Priorities. Uh, as you vacuum up spore, uh, sores around the thing, uh, it will increase its spawn rate. So sometimes you'll have to uh, stop and clean up I almost feel bad for these rock box infected bugs. Uh, until, you know, until you've dealt with all the extra stuff. Fire does pretty decent damage. The rocks po rock pox glyphids are heavily armored. I think. I think they take damage as though their bodies are pretty armored. It does seem to help a lot to... Uh... Oh. Hi. Okay. Yeah, it does seem to help a lot to set them on fire, incidentally, if that's a thing you have a way of doing. So you can see that little meter on the right indicating how much more uh, contagion there is to grab. Okay, we got some more blisters down here. Get these. Okay, cool. Cleansing complete. Do decontaminate thoroughly when you arrive back at the space rig. Lost one. One clear. Um, I think we're gonna have to take another hit here because I'm almost out of rockets. Which means there's only one hit left on that. And we do not have a lot of nitra. Go, Bosco. Bosco, can you get me some vision up there? That's interesting. That's packed dirt. 
Okay, let me uh, zip line up. drop a zip line to that. Our other contagion spike is right here in this same room, so let's hit it. Request cleared. Sending in cleansing equipment. I got one of the annoying bugs. Right. Equipment is at your location. Try to get this over with quickly before the next uh, the next swarm. Uh, there's a great big battery in the dirt there. We're going to deal with that in time. No. Leave me alone. Spawns. I hear a scorpion over there somewhere. Well, I'm really shocked at how much fall damage that dealt to me. Trying to make sure I'm using my weapons a little bit more evenly here. Because if you're not using your weapons evenly, then you're kind of, uh, you may be kind of wasting some of your ammo pulse. And sometimes you're in a position where that's not really a thing you can afford to be doing. Everybody stay on it. Stay on it. All right, cool. We're showing no further sign of rock pox in the cave. Uh, but the swarm music has started. Yeah. This space plague is the worst. All right, fall back to here. Take the bugs at the spot where we have one more charge left. Leaving the fire trail in an area where you know a Mectera is going to hang out can be very effective because Mecteras don't really have all that much HP. One of them catches fire, it's likely to die from the fire damage quite quickly. Actually, let me interrupt that reload and just change my mind slightly. All right, the good news is we have a pretty good sense of the geography of this chamber at this point. Ow. Some of there's like one last acid spitter here. Interesting that I'm not allowed to convert bugs anymore. Do I still have a Steve alive? I wouldn't think so. Alright, we're gonna back off from the pod a little bit, try to get that septic spreader out of its superior position there. They have very impressive range, but it isn't infinite. Twenty-three nitra. <laughs> Terrible shooting. Just awful. That trawler is still over here and alive. Oh hey. Yeah, 
most of them are going to die already. Die! Okay, may as well turn this in while we're here. Alright, so, we found this battery. That's what that noise is. If you ever find a battery like this, just sort of in the dirt, somewhere nearby, you're going to find uh, a battery-operated supply now. chest. Let's grab this and head up on that ledge. I think that's our box right there. Oof, yeah, not a lot of um, not a lot of minerals in the walls in this big ass chamber. Each one of them requires two batteries, and the batteries will never be more than a certain distance away. They won't necessarily be close, but they can't be terribly far. Once you've got the batteries installed, you just gotta repair the cargo crate. And once you have done so, out will come a stream of delicious minerals and finally, a cosmetic of some kind to claim. Uh, obviously, I have all of them because, you know, I have played far too much of this video game. Seems like a good time for one of those. Yeah, I just can't convert. It might be the case that we have a Steve still alive somewhere, but he's like stuck in the terrain. And unfortunately, I don't, there's nothing we can do about that. Give me some light. All right, Bosco, show me the way. Are there any minerals in this fucking cave anywhere? It seems like the answer is not, and that means we need to get moving. Give me some light right here. Just kind of walking the light along the wall. Yeah, okay. Then let's get out of here, because we are going to have to... We're going to have to find our way to more supplies sooner rather than later. Although it looks like I missed some more kite. And we certainly need to grab that. Actually, it looks like there's a lot of more kite up here. Huh, there's a little cavern there, I wonder. dig our way up. Fortunately, very reshapeable, the, uh, the sand. I hear combat sounds. Get on the wall. Okay, looks like multiple tri jaws. That's pretty dangerous, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. We gotta get back to it and get it done quickly. I was just forcibly ejected from the wall there. I wonder if I got too close to one of those uh, sand spouts. Yeah, it sounds like there's one right above us. I must have been just a little bit higher up, and it caught the top of my uh, the top of my model. 
Big swarm detected. Lock up and get ready. Okay, that's extremely bad news. Because we're like really low on um, on stuff in general. Let me try to find. Combat positions. The swarm is here. Well, here it would be good for us to grab. Gosh, it sure would be cool if my dwarf would climb up on this thing. Yeah. Well, yeah try to grab some health. Gotta wait for the rates on. And then I'm gonna sort of slalom back Ooh. down here. Hopefully, wow, that's so much more damage than I was expecting to take. I'd like to fight down here, even though there's no longer, like, supplies waiting for us, because we at least know the terrain. What's this? Wow, how did he survive that? Spread her down! Stay clear of the spillage! How much... Ugh. I do not have very much left in this thing. Just gotta make them count, is all. Let it rain. One thing we do have is grenades. The last one of those. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Trying to really, like, really maximize my power attacks here. really frustrating that slasher died to the the tick of fire damage instead of the power attack okay cool uh, I think we do not have time to do anything other than go I will say this it's pretty unusual for the packed dirt to not be in a place where there's ground. But this is the thing about, you know, Deep Rock Galactic and the uh, procedurally generated terrain is that it can do weird things. It can afford to do weird things in a way that a lot of other games can't because of the fact that the players have the ability to dynamically reshape terrain pretty much to their heart's content. All right, so that's going to pay for about half of it. We need another 22. Let us find it quickly. Nice to find all this sugar. Donkey, come here. But yeah, we are in a very, very dangerous situation here, and I'm not stopping for anything other than more kite or um, nitra right now. Although apparently there's a lot of more kite to stop for. Time to buy Molly. Get as much of it as possible out of the wall. Where the hell is Molly? How are you still 40 meters behind after all this waiting? Uh, Molly's slow movement's gonna get me killed.
honestly, just gonna leave. Not even gonna fight that. Okay, well that's really bad news. First of all, very cool of it to stay in a position where I can't avoid the spit. I need way more than I'm gonna get from a single loot bug. Well, a single loot bug. If I find a bunch of loot bugs, that could solve the problem. It may seem like I'm being a little bit reckless here, but um, for real, if we don't find the amount of nitro we need for a drop very quickly, we are actually going to lose the mission. Okay, so that's 13. Bosco, come here. What are you doing? What? Loot bug eliminated. Time for fireworks. Someone's dead. That was pretty nitro rich. That is not enough. That's two points short. Did I actually get all of the nitro from? Oh wow, that was a lot further of a fall than I thought. It looks like I actually did get all the, the nitro from the previous bug. Yeah, like we actually can't fight these bugs, right? I have no ammo. Thanks, Bosco. We need to get enough nitra. We need to drop the nitra into Molly. We need to uh, We need to call down a supply pod, and then we need to... Oh, 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 okay, here we go, here we go. There was some nitro that I hadn't picked up. And then we need to shield. Oh, of course, sure, no, that makes sense. I'm out of, I'm out of stuff? Yeah, I'm out of stuff. Well, I for real need you to fucking sit down. We just need a second near Molly. Okay, I got the nitro down. Now we have to call this down, run a little bit. We would like to we would like to avoid shielding until the supply pod actually lands. Good enough. Okay. There we go. Oh my god, the cooldown on this is so long. Right, we're just kind of disengaging for a second here. Wow. Okay, that hit me even though I was moving laterally as fast as I could be. Okay. Here we go. Got our enemies sort of packed into as tight a group as they will get around us, which is not a great thing always, but it might work to our benefit here. We survive. 
that was very fucking bad. So the good news is there's a ton of nitra, just kind of all over the, or a ton of markite, just kind of all over the place in this room. We've seen it. We can definitely get our uh, our supply up here. So that sound you keep hearing is this glyphid menace. Who is a, an extremely high priority, very dangerous, etc. Now it's dead. If we discover a new mineral, you think we get to name it? Forty-five. Forty-five more. We know that there are a couple of veins over here in this area. Wow. A lot more survivors of the flame trail than I was expecting. I need the mule right here. Go right back. Ooh, okay. This is definitely gonna be enough between these two veins. I got really worried there, and I guess I shouldn't say got like we're not out of the woods yet. All your objectives are completed. Drop pod beacon awaits activation. There's an Enor Pearl in the wall here. Call for the drop pod. Let's get the fuck out of here. That's how you do it. Drop pod is on the way. We are just, we are headed back to the ammo thing. We're going to take one more hit off of it. Let's stay close. There's going to be an annoying sandstorm, of course. I think we're at full ammo and everything. We're not quite. You know what? I will actually completely refill. All right, this is a really good time for this sandstorm to uh, not be happening. Maybe one of the best times in recorded history. Okay. The drop pod always falls a certain distance away from you and it will generally try to fall in a place that you have knowledge of. Uh, the combination of those two things means that, broadly speaking, the drop pod lands where you came from. It lands in some area that you've already been in. So you can pretty safely, especially if your path has been quite linear, uh, just run backwards and end up where the drop pod is. Uh, also, obviously, you can follow Molly. Uh, Molly is coming this way. We're doing the right thing. It just takes Molly a while to start walking. Go, go, okay, go, go. that's an oppressor. I don't feel a particularly strong need to, to so long, fight that. Now, unfortunately, remember, we cannot leave until Molly uh, actually packs into the drop pods. So we're going to get over here in this relatively open, pretty defensible area. Another one, great. This is the door side. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, that got close, huh? That was a little, <laughs> a little nerve wracking. I have to say, I was actually very happy for some of the particulars of our loadout on that one. Being able to back ourselves into a corner, get under the shield, and just fill that entire chamber and both of the hallways leading to it with the fear hellfire trail from the, the railgun was very, very important. That mission took an awfully long time. <laughs> I know I usually try to do uh, two in these things, but... 
I think I've earned a little break here. That was that was rough. Whew. I do love playing Gunner. I have to say, like there is there is just there is nothing that feels quite like throwing down a shield, reloading your heavy weapon, and then just letting loose on a huge swarm of enemies. And yeah, the, uh, Gunner. Gunner is just absolutely the best. And we're not even using the weapons that I like the most. Just you wait. Closer to completing your assignment. Thank you, Mission Control. Obviously our assignment's just paying us out some extra resources and stuff, and that's cool. And we're totally going to continue to press on, but you know, later, next time. I need a little bit of a break now. Uh, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching me narrowly survive that mission that probably wasn't actually all that hard. Uh, when you come back next time, we have a little bit more work to do on this uh, this bonus assignment, and we have so many more horrible, horrible war crimes to show you. And we'll see you then. <laughs>